despair, dread, death. From the outside looking in, these words might seem fitting for the main themes of the Persona series. This may be an appropriate way to describe the events that propel the stories of Persona forward, but at its core, Persona is about relationships, camaraderie, compassion, and also greed, sex, murder, envy, fear, dicks, big boobs, little boobs, boobs that climb on rocks. I digress. You may begin playing Persona because you hear it's a great RPG, but you will never leave Persona once you have been embraced by its warm cradle, nurtured by its sweet nectar, a nectar formed from the charm and themes that flow through all games in the series. This flavorful consistency in the development of the series is why its ravenous audience continues to grow with each new game. So I hope you're starting to feel hungry. I know I am. <laughs> I'll be back at the end of the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Obsessive Compulsive Gamer Podcast. I have uh, four guests with me today. We are working on discussing the topic of Persona, a very popular game series internationally, not just in Japan, but especially here in America, which was unusual for that type of game uh, since the uh, original series, uh, Megami Tensai, uh, really didn't hit it off here in America. It was really the Persona series that really got all that uh, attention, and for good reason, which is why we're discussing it tonight. Uh, but before we get started on the discussion, I'd like to introduce our newest uh, interviewee today. If you'd like to introduce yourself, sir. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is AJ. Uh, been uh, hanging out with these guys for a while, you know. Pretty excited to finally be here and like start talking. I've been watching the podcast for a while, so yeah. Yeah, he's been begging us to get in, but we keep telling him no, and then we finally just gave in. We needed somebody. <laughs> new. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not true. We love AJ. <laughs> and then uh, we have our returning guest, Mr. Gino. How you doing tonight, Gino? Good. I'm in a pantry still. <laughs> <laughs> oh pantry man. man, pantry man. <laughs> and of I go course, from a closet to a pantry. So. <laughs> and then uh, we have a returning guest who's only been with us uh, what once before, twice before, George. Yes, I believe yes. Okay, I know. I remember for sure when you talked about your Blas Blue. What was yeah, the other and, thing? Near. Oh, Nier that's right. Duh. Podcast, that's yeah. when we did Near. So welcome back. Persona is another series that he loves, and and between him and Gino is the reason why I know all about it. And then finally, from our Star Wars episode, we have Ryan here. Hello, Ryan. How are you tonight? Hey, guys. How's it going? If you guys uh, remember, Ryan also runs his Barbed Tales podcast. If you guys ever get a chance to check it out, please do so. Some funny stuff. He just completed season one. What was it, last week or the week before? Last week. Last week. So six six episodes in that season. Give it a, give it a watch or give it a listen. Some very good stuff. Some very funny stuff. Looking forward to season two. But uh, without further ado, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. Really do appreciate it. So let's talk about a little bit of history. So Megami Tensei, uh, known internationally as Shin Megami Tensei, uh, was the series that started out. It came out, uh, well, from what I read in the history, some of the first games came out on Super Nintendo, but I've never played any of those original games. I think what we're more familiar with are the the uh, initial Persona games. George, I know you're more familiar with these um was it the first Persona game that was broken up into two parts or the second one? It was the second one, actually. Uh, the very first Persona game was just a, a, a standalone title. And it's got kind of like a funny story to it because we got a different version than what released in Japan. The, some of the characters were Americanized, <laughs> if you want to call them that. And uh, their names changed and all that kind of stuff. You know, kind of like the same kind of uh, localization work that four kids used to do. Right. where most of the Japanese uh, references were removed in favor of American references. You know, everybody's familiar with that infamous Pokemon line where it's like, hey, I love these jelly donuts and it's rice balls, you know? So you, that was kind of like the same kind of a, a localization that we saw for the very first Persona game. And as such, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't very well received here in the States until... You know, the later Persona games kind of gave it a little bit more of a of a household name. Right. And then after that, well, basically, uh, uh, they were able to go back 
on the PSP and release that Japanese version once and for all here in the States. Well, actually, that reminds me when you say about the changes they had to make. So I, I mistakenly said that those the Megami Tensai games came out on Super Nintendo, but they actually came out on Super Famicom and never came overseas here to America because of a lot of the religious uh, imagery, imagery they had in there, which, of course, Nintendo was very anti-religious imagery. So a lot of those Japanese games that may have had that never came over here to the States. It wasn't Persona was the first Atlas game in the Megami Tensai series to actually come to the States from what I read. So I don't I don't know how accurate that is. If anyone out there can correct us, then you know please let us know. Feel free to drop it in the comments. But you know trying to do hopefully trying to do good research. But anyway, yeah. So some very interesting stuff. Nintendo's always been really uptight about you know keeping their image family friendly. So I know in uh, recent years that's been less of an issue, um, fortunately. But um, yeah, I know that was part of the issue there. So moving on, the. Um, um, Persona was the first game that we received here. Persona 2 was split in half, like George said. and then uh, But the one that really hit its stride with all of us was Persona 3. Uh, so moving into that, I have, a good, I have a good feeling about this, but let's find out. What was the first Persona game that each of you played? Ryan, we'll start with you. Just tell us right off the bat what was your first Persona game experience. Okay, my first one was the uh, FES. And that would be oh. 3, right? Yeah, yes. correct. But mm -hmm. the special edition three, mm -hmm. with the answer added to it. And the what about the rest of you guys? Was it were any of you guys also three? Was your first experience? Uh, me. Yeah, three was like the first one that I fully yeah. completed. I guess I I, <laughs> I want to say that. Uh, I I was familiar with the series beforehand. Uh, I remember I I played Nocturne in the PS2 before I played mm -hmm. uh three. But Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne was really difficult for younger George, so I never got very <laughs> far on it. Uh, honestly, Persona 3 was a significantly easier game, at least for me, compared to 3. Uh, right. uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, so I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> so all of you guys, your first experience was Persona 3, and that's true for me as well. And that was, that was due to Gino. Gino is the one who shared it with me, and that's why I started playing it. Um, but I'm not as adept with these games as these gentlemen are, which is why I'm hosting and not being an interviewee. <laughs> so we all start with uh, number three. So then my question to you, we'll stick with Ryan. What was it about three in particular that that made it stand out to you compared to other JRPG games? I think with this one, it's like the social aspects and how they affect like uh, the personas you create. And also affects like relationships throughout the game, so you can play it more than once, and it can feel different. And it's not like any choice is wrong. Uh, yeah. But the social aspects, you know, I think it's neat going like, oh, this is what I could create. You know, mm -hmm. uh, these relationships come out, and oh, okay, this is a cool aspect that I never thought of before. Or, you know, just the fact that there's so many different choices. Not in terms of character creation, but in terms of character life. And I really like that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, AJ? Uh, for me, uh, social also as well. That was one of the things. But uh, also the dungeon crawling. When I first, like, when I got into it, like, realizing, like, oh, like, I could progress this dungeon at whatever, like, pace I wanted to, right? As much as you can use it to your benefit or detriment, as I found out, like, real quick. But, yeah, I love the dungeon crawling of just, like, progressing at your own pace and whatever you want. Now remind me, with Persona Three, were the dungeons randomly generated? Um, I believe so, right? I think so. Yes, I think each floor was different. Yeah. Yes, that's what I remember. Because with I don't remember Persona Four didn't do that, and Persona Five definitely does not. But it no. might. But is Persona Four okay? So Persona Three, to our knowledge, is the only one that does the randomly generated dungeons. Yeah, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to go ahead, finish your answer, and then I'll ask the question. Oh, no, so yeah, uh, like, yeah, like the, uh, but also like the social aspects too. And uh, the the persona, like, fusion system and all that stuff, that also really caught me into it because for younger me, as George said, uh, that was like a lot of like Pokemon like esque for me. So I was like, oh, cool, I can collect all these different personas, like, I can fuse them together. I'm like, so like, for me, like, Persona 3 was just like that mix of, Everything I loved at the time, like anime, uh, you know, Pokemon and, you know, 
Japanese video JRPGs. So that was just great, like all overall. So to all your Pokemon fans out there, your love of Pokemon has just been justified. So don't let anyone <laughs> put you down. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> How about you, Gino? Um, the box. <laughs> We're talking about box art. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I had no idea, uh, what, uh, persona was or, uh, anything, but just, I remember seeing, um, uh, yeah, I saw it in a store, I guess I saw it. It was, it had just come out. Uh, and uh, the box art was so beautiful. It was that that special edition, uh, that first wave of PS2 um, version, not the FES, but the one before that. And it had this beautiful, like, uh, particularly the back and just the green and the blue, like, ah. So just on that alone, I bought it purely off the box art. <laughs> I just thought it just looked so magnificent that I had to have it. And uh, then, you know, subsequently, all the reviews came out, and. Uh, you know, it, it looked really interesting and really fun. So, yeah, so then I just dove into it. But yeah, initially just the box art. I do have to agree. I mean, their box art has always been good, but I think Persona 3 in particular, the the art style in general for 3, I think, is probably because I, I don't know, I think I just like that style where it tends to be a little darker. Uh, the imagery is more, yeah. um, I can't even think of the word, but I mean, it's, you. It, I don't know. It's just to me, it was the most creative. Dreary, creative. Man. That, there you go, that's, dreary. It, it, that's yeah. that's my uh, uh, I guess my take on it. Three is definitely the darkest out of uh, the last three Persona games, oh, yeah. which is yes. four oh, or yeah. five. It's not nearly as dark as the first two, but the first two are just completely oppressive in terms of atmosphere. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to play them through and feel comfortable playing them through. Right. So I believe that Persona Three. Uh, struck a, a great balance between that oppressive atmosphere and the light, fun, social aspects of the game that actually is what, you know, drew me to it to begin with. It, it kind of was kind of like a, a, a throwback to those other JRPGs that we used to see a lot in the PS1, where, you know, it had all these interesting ideas built on top of, uh, of your standard JRPG fare. And I believe Persona really just push that a little bit further because it added all the like the guys mentioned all the social elements all the uh character you know choices that you can make the way that you can have your character leave a certain life depending on 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 the kind of school activities that you're interested in i always thought that it gave you uh you know a lot of freedom in that sense uh in addition to being a pretty solid jrpg uh dungeon crawler and uh it's just it was just great, man. It was just very well executed right from the get-go. My only major complaint with Persona 3 is that they don't give you control of your parodies characters right away. And sometimes it's a little bit frustrating when you're fighting against those hard bosses and your your parry character does whatever they want. Mitsuru heals them, you know? You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, even, like, in the first wave of, like, three, like, you couldn't even have, like, direct control over your party members. Like, it was just all no. AI. Right. It was it was not until FES where they gave you that option. So, yeah. at the beginning, you only controlled the protagonist, and you set parameters for your party members. But they would do whatever the fuck they wanted, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, the AI wasn't that great then, okay. Yeah. So that, was, I... that was my only major complaint with the game back when I played it way back when when it first came out in the ps2 so let me ask you guys this because um george and aj in particular have a pretty big age gap between gino ryan and i and uh so when you guys play persona you were still relatively close to uh, you know just having been out of high school I, I i don't remember if you guys were in high school when the game came out or not but um yeah, I was. <laughs> okay I was so there. so since you know part of the when i was reading online part of the whole reason for them to do shin megami tensai persona was for them to take those same rpg aspects but do them in a high school drama style which is why all the persona games take place in high school that's just been a consistent thing they've done so for you guys did having that high school aspect um cause you to enjoy the game differently like did you feel more connected to it or did you not just give a shit about that at all AJ? 
Uh, <laughs> I, look, I think the no, looks I on your I'm, face is telling me everything I need to know. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can kind of like say that I was like drawn to that as well, just because like I was in high school when I picked it up. Uh, I was a senior in high school. And so, yeah, like kind of like that part did. I was like, oh, cool. Like I can be in the swim team, even though like I'm obviously not swim team material. <laughs> so I was like, let me be on the swim team. And then uh, it's like George said, like you could like live your fantasy high school life, like join the French club with that weird French kid. <laughs> for me personally i mean it wasn't really so much the high school aspect of it but just the fact that back at the time it was it was pretty different i mean how many how many at the time how many rpgs did you find with that particular kind of setting you know back then it was mostly about the high fantasy you know the 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 dragons the swords the all that stuff you know which persona obviously has some of it but the fact that it's so rooted in reality i think and that the characters are so relatable sometimes because they're students as opposed to you know the king of illyria or whatever yeah <laughs> it's it's it's, <laughs> it's just what makes those characters so much more endearing to me back then and and how those characters of persona 3 are the ones that i still carry with me after all these years I mean, four and five, yeah, of course, they're 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 great games, and I love them. But three were the ones that really connected with me, and the ones that I still, I still, you know, like really, really like. When when I see art of them, I'm like, oh, look, how cool, you know. It's 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 just that kind of relationship that you have with with characters that that you know because they made them more relatable to you, and they live the same kind of circumstances that you do. That that really made the characters in particular stand out for me. Not particularly the setting, if it makes any sense, but mm -hmm. the characters in the setting itself. Which is probably the most important aspect of that game. Yeah. Of any of those games in the series is being able to connect to those characters. So I think what I'm hearing is that more so it's the modern take on the RPG. Because you're right. I mean, here in America, <laughs> we had Final Fantasy and then we had a um, Dragon Quest, right? Those are the two big RPGs that would come out in America. You know, people lost their shit when Final Fantasy came out because it was more of a sci-fi style setting, but it was still fantastical, right? Yeah. It, we had never really right. had an RPG that took place in you know a modern world that we could connect to, and I exactly. think I think that's what you mean that you hit on the nose right there. I think that's why it's so popular now. Not so much that it's high school, but that it's modern. Mm -hmm. And then of course you have those social connections, so that's cool. Um, yeah. And I hate to say like. When I started for, first started playing Persona 3, because you do so much social connections and so strong, that in my private life, when I talk to people, I'm like, what's the best way I can connect to them? <laughs> <laughs> Level myself up. <laughs> yeah, huh? it, it kind of, it's a little bit transactional <laughs> at times, where you're like, oh. I'm going to say this so I can advance my social link with Gino. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say our level of social link is, you know? Are we at a 10 yet, darling? God, I, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I feel that you're trying to sabotage your social link with Gino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Very I good, Ryan. That, uh, are, um, <laughs> and for me, like, uh, I, can, I, can, I don't want to, like, butt in. No, no, no. no please, no, no, please. Are you guys okay? Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think for me at the beginning, uh, it felt a little bit that, like going into hot topic, you know, a, as a 40 year old, uh, you kind of just feel like you don't belong there, you know, and you're kind of looking around hoping no one is, is you know, saw you come in. <laughs> uh, so you know, initially, it, it, feels kinda, it felt that way to me because, you know, I think at that point I was 32 or, or something when I finally played it because I bought it in 2007. And then, you know, my backlog is to the point that. I won't get to games for years, but I'll still <laughs> want to play them. So I finally played it in like 2012, you know? Um, so yeah, initially I was, I was kind of, you know, it was a little bit, and it was a little twee, you know, and just, uh, there was, there's some unbearable uh, aspects about it, but, um, but man, like, I, I think it, uh, it's really lovingly produced. Um, mm -hmm. Those characters by the end of it, you're kind of in love with them, like all of them. Um, oh. And I don't think I've had that strong a connection to, to all of those characters, to a cast of characters like I did with three. 
Um, and, and then uh, subsequently in four also. Um, yeah. But particularly with three, just I was I knew those characters, you know, those characters by the end of it. And it's just it's a really neat, neat, uh, uh, you know, just from one to the next. It's it's incredible. You know, yeah. And you see them grow a lot, too, you know, because the the let, let me use this specific example. The, the Junpei that you meet at the beginning of the game is not even close to being the same character right. to the Junpei right. that you get at the end of the game in Persona 3. And mm -hmm. and right. I, I love how how well and how believable his character progression was because for a lot of the game, he was a fuck up, you know? <laughs> it's real funny. Yeah, right? because the whole thing way. with the monorail and all that kind of stuff where he gets you into trouble. But then by the end, he's like one of your staunchest companions. And, you know, he's like... Yeah. you know a really strong character to rely on and by the end you're like sup dude you know <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah he does feel like your best friend at the end of the yeah, game yeah, like, yeah, yeah. bro let's do it like yeah. that's so awesome. yeah that's uh that's that's i guess my take on it you know the, the characters i i just i was just really fond of all of them there's not a single character in that game that i can be like uh, you know, I kind of didn't like yeah, him. No, you right. know, every time that I replay the game, I would use a different party because all those characters just had something to give. I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. So, so how about gameplay then? I mean, we've talked a lot about story and the social links, but how about gameplay itself? Uh, like specifically, three was for me back in the day when I first started it, like pretty grueling. Just because I was like, oh, okay, like I do have to hit a certain level by a certain time frame in this game, right? And then you have to make sure your personas are leveled up, not just your player character. And then you have to like keep track of your gear on top of that. So there's like a lot of elements to it for sure, but it's also like so much fun. And I think that's like personally for me, like where my love of like min maxing in RPGs came from was Persona 3. Just because like you could like, the character wasn't like, stuck with one type of weapon if you wanted to use like fists for one weapon you could buy your main character fist and have or if you wanted him to use a sword you could use a sword right it was so just so much fun to like really like plan everything out be strategic with everything and i say this now but like it was so complex for me back then that i just like i want to see the story so i just booted up my action replay gave myself all the money uh. <laughs> <laughs> and i just experienced the story but then like i was like all right i'm gonna experience everything like experience the grind and the grind is so much fun like that's i love it yeah that's and awesome the time management i think right because you had a limited number of days and uh yeah. you had to know how to use them wisely and there's always different things that you can do so since the game has that kind of day limit built in you you have to be a little bit conscientious in the way that you spend your days and that was i think a really interesting part of the gameplay as well and something that drew me Yeah, that's where I realized that I have horrible time management. So I was like, <laughs> let's go to school. Let's go to school. Let's study. Oh, I have the boss fight in like two days. I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're studying for the test, but you forgot about the real test. Exactly. So I want to I want to I want to give some clarification to the audience here because we keep talking about Persona 3 in particular. But um, so for your audience members who may not be as familiar with Persona, Particularly with three, four, and five, there's your standard three, four, and five, but each version of the game has an additional enhanced release. Like Persona Three is a FES, right? And then yes. Persona Four is Golden, and then mm -hmm. Persona uh, Persona Five just released Royal this year. And um, so, in let me ask you this: just in general, when you guys talk about playing Persona Three, it being your first experience, which one of you guys first played FES? And never played the original Persona Three. Oh, I first played FES. And Gino too. George. Actually, funnily enough, that the very first time I played uh, all the way through Persona Three was on the PSP. Oh, Persona Three PSP. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Persona wow. Three Portable. Uh, or Portable. It was. Yeah. It was. It was a, a a summer where where I didn't have a TV. I think. And I was like, man, I never finished Persona. And and I was like, you know what? I have a save file that's like halfway through, but 
I wanna I wanna start it over because Persona 3 Portable had the female protagonist, you know? Right. And it was like it's supposed to be like a whole new story with the female protagonist. <laughs> so I kinda got sucked in into into buying it for my PSP and 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 try it out with the female protagonist. And you know, it 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 really does show you a different side of the characters. And I, I thought it was it was really cool because it shows the difference that despite that your character is a silent character, you can still tell the difference in personality between the female protagonist and the male protagonist, just in the way that they answer or the answers that you have to choose between the female protagonist and the male protagonist, you know? The the female protagonist uh, is kind of a little bit more sweet and a little bit more caring to her to her friends, and the male protagonist is kind of a sarcastic dick sometimes, you know? <laughs> so yeah. you can pick some answers where you're just kind of an asshole. And and with the female protagonist, is not the case. She's very sweet, even when she's being kind of, you know, the snarky answers that you can pick for it. And and I thought that was a really cool touch by the by the producers to actually kind of make different characters, despite the fact that they don't even really say anything. <laughs> And and I thought that was a, a really cool touch. Now, I know there's some gameplay differences with uh, Portable versus FES or just the regular Persona 3. What were some of those gameplay differences they did, they made to speed it up? Uh, well, the thing is, is that the overworld was completely revamped. You know mm -hmm. how in Persona 3 you can kind of walk around in the overworld and meet the characters and stuff? The biggest complaint that people had, and myself included there uh, with Portable, was that it got turned into kind of like a visual novel style game. So instead of walking around the overworld and stuff, you actually had a static screen and the characters were just sitting there and you would control a cursor around the screen. And then if you wanted to talk to someone, you would just put your cursor over their, I guess, character tag, and then you would talk to them. So the overworld, instead of being a, a 3D environment where you would walk around and, and purchase your weapons and stuff like that, it was kind of like a like a 2D environment that that you would move a cursor around. So it looks a lot more like a visual novel as opposed to an RPG. Uh, I believe they did that to save space because the audio was totally uncompressed. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, there's a lot of audio in that game. And uh, it, it just didn't fit in the PSP. Like right. the, the 3D environments that they use for, for like the school setting and the mall and the dorm and all those places that you just kind of hang around in Persona 3, they don't exist in Portable. And mm -hmm. that was just the biggest complaint that, that people had about it. Have any of you other guys played Portable? Yeah, I have. And yeah, I kind of, I actually do like the visual novel. That's just because I was one of those kids that spent like the majority of my summer vacation on Newgrounds playing visual novel games and all that stuff. So, like, for that, for me, I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And I also did, like, the female protagonist point of view. So because, again, like George said, she changes, like, so much of the characters that you thought you knew and you get to know, like, another little bit more complex side to them and all that stuff. Uh, especially, I think, with the female protagonist, it was Ken, who, like, really kind of, like, in my eyes, like, had a little bit more character development. Yeah. And Shinjiro, too, right? Like you, oh, yeah. uh, as a as a female as a female protagonist, you can actually start dating Shinjiro, and and yeah. it really opens up his character a lot uh, to you before you know his unfortunate demise in the game. <laughs> he was weak to gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shinjiro. Yeah, he was one of those. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the female protagonist was just like. Again, like George said, like an awesome addition. Uh, yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I really feel like more games should do that, where, you know, even though it's still the, the same game overall, there's these little minute changes that you can find that, that actually really add a lot to the game. So um, I'm a huge fan of Persona 3 Portable, despite its shortcomings, honestly. Yeah, same. It's an awesome, like, adaptation. Now, does FES include that female protagonist, or...? Oh, it was okay. exclusive only to portable. To the portable. Actually. So if if you wanted to play it through the female protagonist, you had to play it through portable. And uh, the I guess stunted version of the game, if you want to call it that, that's what they used to call it. So it's it's a story that's still trapped in the PSP, if you want to <laughs> call it that. Yeah, because it hasn't been ported to anything else, right? Nope. 
Mm-hmm. Unlike Persona 4 Golden that was eventually ported to PC. Yeah, uh, just this year. Persona 3 Portable is still stuck on, on that platform, unfortunately. Hmm. So you would recommend that people try out Portable, but only after they've at least experienced the main Persona 3 once? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a super worthwhile experience, and it's different enough, and it, it's illuminating enough that I, I definitely think somebody who, who likes these games enough uh, is not gonna be like, man. I wish I didn't play portable at all. <laughs> Who the fuck is gonna say that? Of course not. You know. <laughs> no, yeah. And they even have like little Easter eggs from like like characters from four in there and stuff like that. Oh so, yeah, that's super cool. I think you see yeah. you you get to meet Yukiko at some point, right? From four. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah you go yeah. to the fam- her family's hotel. So yeah, it was like it has like all this cool little like foreshadowing and like throwbacks and. I think if I'm not mistaken, even uh, the guy from Catherine is also in Portable oh, too, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, in the bar, right? In the bar that you can go yeah, yeah. into in, in... Oh, God, what's the name? In the mall. Place? Polonia Escapade Mall. Or something. Yeah, Polonia yeah. Mall. Yeah, you, you can go into the... <laughs> I see the Gino nightclub. reacting. You yeah. know Polonia Mall, don't you, Gino? <laughs> and money, man. <laughs> Yeah, but it, in in the little bar there, eventually you you get to meet Vincent during the, I think it's the the game's last couple weeks, right? Where everything I is like so, yeah. dark and it's bleak and there's no way out. Like he's like right there, hey kid, remember me, right? And nobody knew who it was. And then Catherine came out and everybody's like, oh, it's that dude from Persona Three. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then that happened. Catherine came out like a year after that right after they yeah first i believe that. so yeah yeah because because he's and, like hey you remember me and, I'm and like, they never oh, like he didn't have a name in persona right it was just no, this no, dude no. in the bar it's okay. just like middle-aged dude or something like that yeah middle-aged man in bar i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so like it was super cool like i i highly recommend like a playthrough of portable like when you have like nothing else to do <laughs> yeah. so we've we've talked a lot about three um what about four and five? I I know. Okay, so let let's go back. So, what AJ have you played through three, four, and five? And what I versions? Have played through three. And what versions have you played? Uh, so, through? for three, it was standard three FES portable. Uh, four was just standard, and then five standard. And I'm making my way through Royal right now. Okay. How about you, Gino? I uh, finished three, finished four. Um, I didn't do golden. Um, uh, and five, I'm in the middle of. I think I'm about 30 hours into five. It's probably not yeah, the middle. So not quite of it, done. That's, that's about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. The main tip of the beginning. <laughs> into the game. <laughs> it's still kind of like the introduction. I'm in the level. prologue. <laughs> George? Uh, I played through uh, regular three. I I played through uh, portable, and uh, when when I got FES, I did not play through the regular game again through FES. I only played through the answer, uh, which was uh, like the epilogue to three. I played portable four. I played uh, four. Uh, I'm sorry, portable four. I played regular four. I played golden, uh, Persona four golden. And I played regular Persona 5. I have not yet picked up uh, Royal. I'm hoping it's going to dip in price a little bit more before I invest on it. Uh, but additionally, I have played through the Ice Queen scenario of the first Persona game. And I have played through Innocent Sin and most of Eternal Punishment. I think I fucked myself over in Eternal Punishment and I'm stuck. So it's, it's <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to have to start over. <laughs> How about you, Ryan? Uh, play through three. I played through the. I have the PS Vita, uh, four golden, mm-hmm. and then I have five. I'm halfway through five. I have the uh, uh, take your heart edition, but I don't have Royal. Okay. Yeah, I've um. I mean, I personally, I've I've played some of three. I I'm more than halfway through Golden, uh, but I really need to go back to it. And then my daughter and I are playing through five together. And we've played it for 130 hours, and we're probably three quarters of the way through. So it's a really long play for her because yeah. playing RPGs for her is still a brand new thing. 
Um, so it's been tough. But yeah, I have not completed any Persona games. So that's what puts me in the weak spot here. Um, okay, so then how about four and five for you guys? How do they compare to your experience with three? Well, like for me, I liked the story of four just like a tad bit more just because it wasn't so like dark and gloomy right like three was like three like got like really kind of like dark towards the end and i was like whoa i need to take a break but oppressive with, almost right? yeah <laughs> oppressive yeah but with four and it does also get like it's it have it oppressive moments as well but overall like four was just kind of like a little bit more lighthearted. So, like, I, for me, the story of 4, even through, like, all the other spinoffs of Persona 4, like, really stands out as one of my favorite Persona stories. And then 5, I can honestly say that one is, like, like, I love 5, like, I do, but the story for me in that one just kind of drags a little bit. To me, it's the weakest for the 3, honestly. Five. Yeah, I, I can know honestly that's controversial, controversial to say, but five is by far the weakest of the three for me. Honestly, yeah, it's got a lot of style. I'm not gonna deny that. It's got absolute masterclass of style and design. But where I we look for in the Persona games, which is the story and character development and whatnot, I mean, it was really good, but it wasn't. It wasn't over the top, and and it wasn't like the way that three and four were so endearing and so you know heartwarming i yeah. i feel like five is a little bit more you know more style over substance if that makes any sense as opposed to you know just uh just a really great solid from beginning to end rpg game that that really sticks with you and it does it just i i believe that it if if, if three and four are tens five is a nine honestly yeah, honest, I can honestly agree with that statement too. Just because, like, for me with five, like, I really didn't really click with the characters until like almost like the midway point of the game, like you know. And so it was kind of like it kind of put me off a little bit because I was like waiting for like that, like the best friend moment that you have with like Junpei or Yosuke or you know like some kind of like just like kind of like, character like just like breakthroughs or like something. And it just it took a while, and most of that in five was like guarded behind their dungeons. So I was like, mm-hmm. Ugh, like you know, <laughs> yeah. And then it didn't really come out like a lot in their social links. I don't think so anyway, just because like their social links were just like a reflection of where they were at that point, and not so much like a growth like you saw with everybody else. I can I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Those like George says, like five to me is like the weakest story, but flashy wise, like graphic wise, like yeah, it's, I love five, but. Yeah, like four for me has like the best story. Since five is the one that I've had the most experience with, I do want to throw this out there that George had mentioned earlier that the characters experienced a lot of growth in three, that you could see their story arcs from beginning to end, how they had changed. And I do feel with five playing through it that the characters don't don't seem to change very much. Uh, there are a couple oh. of characters that seem to have immediate story story arcs that you know they change from one moment to there's one character in there uh futaba who um, oh, yeah. you know she probably has the quickest change but hers happens mid story and it's not like it's not part of the main story right it's like her own independent story when she changes she's like the way she is for the story so your main character it's like it's kind of like that idea where you know how people talk about who's the better superhero between Batman and Superman. And then people say Batman because, you know, Batman's character, he has this arc, right? He's different and he changes and he has to make, while Superman, his thing is that he already has the appropriate beliefs of what is right yeah. and wrong. He's and so, perfect. You know, right, exactly. <laughs> and, and that's what I feel like the main character is in Persona 5, that his belief system is the correct one and you're helping push his belief system on the world in that game so he doesn't have to change it's the world itself that's changing which if you know which can be less interesting than three because obviously in three that character's story arc was much different right because of the things they had to go through so i can totally see that he he feels the main character in five to me feels too much like a messiah 
you know mm. like they they put him in this situation where he goes to the to the school that's jacked up because it's and they send all the delinquents there and everything like that and then he meets these characters and he saves them you know or it's like he saves Anne from the volleyball coach he saves ryuji from you know the evil track and <laughs> and uh people and stuff like that and and it just feels like that's the whole point of the story him you know saving people as opposed to the characters just kind of growing uh uh independently of the of the protagonist because junpei felt like a character independent of the protagonist of persona 3 for me ryuji does not really feel like an independent character of the protagonist in 5 he just kind of feels like he's there to be the the sidekick you know yeah. and and he doesn't really evolve or grow much throughout the story right uh and i i just feel like 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 the characters were were a little bit better played out in the previous games if if that makes any sense no and I, and i think you're right sure. i think i think part of the reason 5 is so much more popular is just because one the games have been gaining popularity but two it's probably the most approachable game story wise it's not as complex complex or nuanced as especially three but even four yeah. um and then of course the characters you know everyone can understand oh i'm playing the character who everyone loves and everyone always defers to that character it's like when you're having those uh, cell phone conversations the text chats you know whenever oh, yeah. anyone brings up a question they say oh well what do you think we should do no one yeah. says I, I disagree with you. you know it's always your decision at the ultimately and i know the other games play with that but there's also there's there's more of the nuance where even if you make a decision then there's consequences to your decision and and five it doesn't seem that way as much anymore and i don't know if atlas planned it that way because that would that way would make it more approachable so yeah i think that's why five may be more popular because it's more approachable from a gameplay standpoint but also a storyline standpoint and the conflict too. I I believe there's a lot of more intercharacter conflict in in three and four, mm -hmm. where the characters disagree and have fights and stuff like that. I mean, we we talked about Junpei specifically how he kind of causes the whole quagmire with the monorail and and he almost causes your your party to die and stuff like that. And it's just you know they 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 start off as as as, as having all these conflicts, but eventually they get resolved and they grow as people. At the beginning, you're not even like the leader of the party. You know, you got Mitsuru and right. Akihiko that kind of take over at the beginning, and and in five from the get go, you're the leader. You're right. the you're the you're you're the badass. You're 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 and you know that kind of roughed me the wrong way. I, it I don't know if it did to anybody else, but the fact mm -hmm. that 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 you're so strong and that you're 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 such a paragon from the very start, it just kind of feels like you're stuck living in this unjust world and it's 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 kind of like a gosh no i i i don't know i just like the the setting of three and four a lot better than five <laughs> that's that's just me sorry no i mean <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't think any of us are saying any there's something wrong with five we're not saying five is a bad game folks don't worry about yeah. that five is still a terrific <laughs> game it's just we also feel that there's better storytelling in especially three compared to four uh, Gino, Ryan, you guys have been pretty quiet during this conversation. Do you guys have anything you'd like to add? Um, oh, shit, Gino moved. <laughs> <laughs> I know Gino looked frozen there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it was really difficult going from uh, from three to four, and I, I kind of, um, initially, I kind of hated it. Um, but... You know, uh, the same thing happens, you know, uh, the same kind of charm kind of takes over uh, in four um, because you the characters are so strong. Um, and again, you know, I found it like each of these have been different love affairs, essentially, you know, three yeah. was a different love affair than four. And you fall in love with uh, I mean, for me, particularly four, obviously three was like Junpei, you know, but for me, four was was, you know, um, uh Chie, who's brilliant. I mean, that character is just so great. Uh, and to me, she kind of like embodies like every single girl I went to high school with and or was in love with, you know? So there's like this strange fellows there, but it's it, it's really, uh, it was impacting. I mean, it, uh, I really loved four. And five, um, you know, I'm halfway through it. So I, I stopped uh, halfway through because uh, Royal 
was coming out. So I didn't want to, I'd rather just start over and then get the full, you know, the full package. So, but I love, I love five so far. So, so ladies, that's my take. Gino is single. And if you have a personality traits like Chia from pers- uh, person <laughs> four, let me know. I can uh, get you his information. <laughs> He's taken Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really late claim. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Brenda knows. Ah, she probably supports it. What am I saying? <laughs> Gino said it's strange bedfellows. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ryan? <laughs> okay. Well, I think like with three, four, and five, all the stories are good and well told. You know, it's just that five gets the benefit. Um, uh popularity of four and the popularity of three so it builds up you know but it's just like a lot of the like especially with four and five a lot of the mechanics are really cool like yeah. they do stuff with the fusion system that i really like mm. uh so the gameplay and the graphics are a lot better but that's that's going to be with any game over time right yeah so i like them all yeah i do prefer three in a lot of ways because of story but it's not like saying that four and five are bad stories Right. It's yeah, no. just they set such a high bar with their games. It's going to be hard for them. Like when, whenever they do Persona Six, you know, who knows what's going to happen yeah. then? Right. In in what in ten years we'll get to see the first trailer <laughs> for Persona Six. Yeah. <laughs> the way yeah. things have been going on, on PlayStation <laughs> Six. PlayStation, <laughs> PlayStation Six is going to come out just a few months later, so you got to wait for it, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'd love to say we have to wait for it for Xbox Y series, but Microsoft is always changing the name of their system. So who the F knows what it's going to be in that yeah, 10 years? Nobody knows. You might I as mean, well try to guess what time this one's going to come out. Oh, I mean, wait, I, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things we haven't talked about yet, we've kind of mentioned it. Uh, are, of course, there's been graphical improvements. There's been gameplay improvements. But the one fundamental thing in Persona that we, I think we all love is the music. So let's talk a little bit about music from Persona. Do you have a favorite song or do you have a favorite music soundtrack from one of the games? I know. What are they thinking? One thing I do like about Shin Megami games is that a lot of them come with soundtracks with them, even on the DS and 3DS. Like, Get the game. Oh, and here's the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I always thought you that was really little cool. sampler, right? It's always real cool. Like the yeah. one for Soul Hackers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Soul Speaking Hackers. Speaking of Soul Hackers. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, is somebody going to go first? <laughs> I just asked the question. You guys, I expect the answer. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Favorite track would have to be, or favorite soundtrack overall, probably four. I don't know. I'm a filthy four fanboy, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, there's so much that I love, but five also had its good sounds. Two to three, like I can't. Honestly, hate. All they all do. It, it's kind of difficult to pick a single uh, one that's gonna be the best one because they're also kind of different styles too. Yeah. You know, uh, five has this, you know, kind of more swingy, more kind of big bandish kind of stuff to it as far as the battle music goes. goes. And then three have Lotus Juice. <laughs> yeah. Lotus <Right>. Juice. <laughs> Gino, Gino, I know you're what you're you're Lotus Juice greatest American fan. So please, Gino, tell us about Lotus right. Juice. <laughs> he, he the composer. Um, What's his name? Shoji Meguro or yeah. Meguro? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't know what train he's trying to jump. You know, <laughs> it's like this mix. It's like I'm watching, like in Living Color, uh, like the Fly Girls. Like he saw that and he said, "You know, I need to choreograph that for a lifetime, a full lifetime." And it's beautiful because you can't, you you will never find anything that sounds remotely just like it anywhere it's <laughs> awesome like uh, so he's definitely got his own thing going uh, and then he's got yeah then he's got his you know his collaborator so like lotus juice which is you know it's great it's great in game you know uh, but I, I would i would imagine if you're out there at a club and someone puts on lotus juice you know, you know how 
you know? But man, great stuff in game. And then, you know, like once you're acclimated to it and, you know, you, I, you know, I take it with me walking and running and doing stuff too. So it definitely translates out into the, the real world. But I mean, just the style of it is just, you, you just don't see it anywhere else. His style is, is his very own. So uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's great. And, and with on that, I think three is probably the best because it is just so weird. Uh, and four uh, kind of streamlines it a little bit. Five streamlines it even more. Um, but but three's just got like all of these, you know, jutting uh, things from its from the carcass. You know, it's it's awesome. So yeah, it's like a pink cushion yeah. almost, right? It's got all these these points coming out of it, and and yeah. and, and you you brought up a really good point: the weirdness. That, that that's something else that I feel has been lost as the series has progressed. It used to have this right. this this own particular brand of weirdness to it that, you know, it, it's been one of the, the as it has reached mainstream, I guess it, it has lost it a little bit because mm. you, you you're yeah. not gonna find that that song that goes <laughs> in the newer games, you know that 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 in three came out and 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 all the bizarre shit that Lotus just did in three. You're not gonna find it in the newer games, you know. It, it's it's just it's right. just so unique and so so belonging to three. Rogue yeah. like, <laughs> baby, 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 baby. Oh man, like, oh, man. It, no. it's classics all yeah. over the place, uh, and 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 that I think that cool. the the fact that it was so weird is what made three so so memorable in terms of the soundtrack. You know, oh. the 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 baby, right. baby, 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 and then the for portable then you have uh wiping all out which was the female's protagonist theme which is oh, oh it's probably one of the, yeah. the better uh themes for for you know individual characters that that persona has i just enjoy it so much because it has the inane lotus, so lotus juice trapping like, yeah <laughs> so you know it's like they're just over or just under the note always you know it's like well so literally, but all right. <laughs> so. It's it's honestly, yeah. Three three is my favorite soundtrack, but they all have fantastic things to mm. them. Honestly, I could name a song from each of the soundtracks that they're my favorites. And of course, for three, it's wiping all out. For four, I'm a huge fan of 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 the one that they put out for Golden, the Time to Make History. I, oh, I thought no, that was a great no. song. No, you don't like Time to no. Make History? Ah, oh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> how, how, how do you beat uh <laughs> you know like this <laughs> oh see that's that that's great too of, you know, me why you did it. yeah yeah that's 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 oh, great i you, uh, yeah yeah i'll admit that heartbreak heartbreak is great too but you know it, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. and then for five uh the the whole rivers in the desert the futaba's boss oh, theme yeah. i thought that was great too yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I have a I mean, gosh, I, I could keep going. There's probably at least a hundred songs from these this series that I really, really like. And you know, I have the soundtracks for all all five games on my mm -hmm. on my little phone and I listen to them routinely whenever I go hiking or I exercise, etc. I mean it's just it's just great great music to put on and just kind of forget about your worries for a while, man. It's, it it transports you to the game world, honestly, and and it gives you that 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 good feeling that 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 almost as if you're playing the game. <laughs> so, just an editor's note to Mike: um, Lotus Juice, find some stock video footage of Fly Girls from In Living Color. <laughs> Throw that on the on the uh, video, please, just so that way everyone gets an idea of what Gino was talking about. Because you have it, you have to see it to believe it. <laughs> really. And 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 for those who aren't familiar, uh, Lotus Juice is is the the nom de guerre, if you want to call it that, of of <laughs> of the rapper who does most of the of the vocals in in Persona Three. <laughs> so then, how integral is the music to these games? Oh, it is absolutely essential. I think 100%. I think it it's it's only second to the story. I think the music takes a uh, 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 a front seat to the gameplay. Actually, yeah. I think like that the music. Go sorry, go ahead, Ryan. No, sorry. I was like, whenever you go to the Velvet Room, 
and they play that Ari of the Soul and different versions of that, that's like awesome. It yeah. sticks with you afterwards. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> are you being it just hits time? it right. No, no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, really? like the music really is its own like kind of character in a way, just because you have like these this like awesome music and then it it, it adds to the weirdness because you're fighting a giant demon that's shaped like a dong and it's like <laughs> oh yeah and you're like ha it's like, all right cool so again the music really you, just does like you you have no idea weirdness. you have no idea what i went through in in persona 5 when my daughter was fighting a giant dick and freaking <laughs> what's what's the main guy what's whatever the volleyball coach's name is and I'm oh, just yeah, sitting yeah. there like this. And I'm wondering, <laughs> does she know what she's fighting? Like, do I say something? And I'm fucking streaming this live. <laughs> like, Teach your moment. It's yeah. like, Enjoy uh, some parenting for all to see, right? <laughs> so that was a very tough moment for me. <laughs> it's great, man. Are there any it's others that you like, Brian? Oh, in terms of songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, that one, like, always stood out. Because it always felt like, it's like a through line between all of them. Whenever you go into that, inside that velvet room I... and you hear that song, it's like, but, like, your sister hates that song. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever she, as long as she's like, oh, oh yeah. I'm playing Persona. I hate it, too. Which is why, I, <laughs> you know, I thought you were doing it in jest. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, like, I, I used that act with her. I just want to pull the trigger. I mean, <laughs> oh god. Oh, so I take it you don't spend a lot of time in the velvet room then, whenever you're playing the <laughs> no, game. No, I right? don't. <laughs> I want to get. Wow, out. that is that is such a strange take. Uh, can 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 you please elaborate? Um, um, why do you hate it so much? Please. I mean, please. why the, why the hell would I listen to that when I can <laughs> listen to all of the awesome overworld and dungeon music? You know what I mean? It's just so lame, and I know it's become. Uh, it's iconic. It's an iconic piece of the series, but I can't stand to hear it. I, I, it <laughs> grates on my last nerve. That 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 velvet room. So Ooh. you're not a fan of the of the tinkling ivories, then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a right. shame. I, I I think that that's like Ryan said. It's a great point. That that's like one of your anchor points to the series. Like. If it, it, it's in one, two, three, four, and five, and 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 it's whenever you walk into the velvet room and you start to hear that piano melody go on, you're like, holy shit, you know, I'm in the velvet room. And no, it, you're it like, had... holy shit, can we please change the music <laughs> now? <laughs> and and you know, despite the fact that the velvet room takes many shapes throughout the series, you know, in three it's an elevator, in four it's the limousine, and five it's the prison. In one and two, it's a little bit more 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 standard. It's just a room, but uh, it, it's 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 still you know kind of kind of brings you to to puts you to mind like all right, let's do some persona fusing, you know, <laughs> like that's all we're gonna do because we're in the fucking velvet room. <laughs> <laughs> so has Soji uh, Meguro been the composer for all five games? Uh, I'm not I don't sure know actually. On board in the beginning. In yeah. one and two, but I know three, four, and five. He, he he's pretty much yeah. done, and he's done like uh, pretty much all of the side, uh, the asides for the series. So the three DS, any of those, and the portables. Um, so yeah, he's definitely, and I think in the remakes. He he did contribute music, so he definitely is like the uh, yeah, one of the very... city mark. Sure. I mean, okay. Yeah. I did Just pull a brilliant guy. I'd love to see it live. I really would, because it would be really like nothing else. And when you fought, when you watch those those stage shows that they put on, it is exactly like he is chore choreographing in living color. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, you'll watch it, you know, see if you disagree. But yeah, he has been with with At uh, Atlas since 1996, I believe, which is when the very first Persona game came out. So yeah. I believe he has been in charge of all the Persona games now. It shows here. Uh, Revelations Persona in 96, which, which is the first one. But I do not see another Persona until 3. So, yeah. 
because I'm looking here, and so he, in '97, De- Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, '99, Machin X, 2001, Machin Shao Demon World, 2003, Shin Megami Tensei Three Nocturne, and then the Maniacs version, and then uh, Digital Devil Saga, and number two, he also did the Trauma Center under the knife music. Uh, then something yeah. Devil Summoner Raido Kozuno versus the Soulless Army. Then Persona Three. Yes, then, you are correct. He skipped Persona Two. Yeah, looks like it. It's, but uh, wow. then it comes Crazy. back. Oh, interesting. In 2011, I guess the re-release of Persona Two Innocent Sin it lists him as a game director. And then the same thing for Persona Two Eternal Punishment. So probably for the re-release. I don't know if he had any hand in the music. That's what I'm I wondering know there. Or one, they redid some of the music, and he was uh, responsible for that. So maybe that's what it was for two. But damn, he's he's done music for almost every game, especially the major games that they've released. Because he did the music for Catherine, he did the music for all the uh, Trauma Center games, and then the, that third one, Trauma Team. And then uh, he, he's done it for the arenas, the Persona Q games. I mean, everything. So he's pretty much been there. Their main music guy since 1996. Along with Lotus Juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next question. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Yes, I think you're right. I think we're ready for our next question. <laughs> so uh, this one goes into really the heart of what the series is, which are those characters. So who is your favorite character? If you have only one, I mean, if you have multiple characters, please share. And then, you know, tell us why you chose that person as your favorite. Ryan, what do you, let's start with you. Okay, this was actually really hard. So many great characters. Yeah. Um, so instead of like listing like Shinjiro, who I loved, and Yoshike, who I loved, I think what I love best with the Persona series are the demons you summon. Because mm. they have personality, especially like Jack Frost. Oh, you yeah. know, they come out and they're funny and they mm-hmm. team up with other characters and they do stuff and I just love that. So yeah. I'm going to choose like the demons that you summon. Cool. That's a good take. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah you're right. You're right. It, it it's they are they are their own character, yeah. As an aside, yeah, that that I thought that was a great thing that was lost for a while in the series, the fact that you could talk to demons. You can't do it in three and four, but you can do it in one, two, and five, and uh, and it really goes to show that you know they did put a little bit more thought to the enemies than than average, you know, because they do show a personality coming through for all of them. You can see it in five a lot, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about you, AJ? Favorite character? Uh, oof. Uh, where do I start, man? <clears throat> uh, I what about do this? honestly. Can you- can you say like at least two per game? Can you keep it to two per game? <laughs> I can keep it for two per game. So for three, <laughs> for the protagonist, uh, male protagonist, and then uh, Ken, because uh, he's awesome. And then for four, it would be, uh, what's the best? Uh, Yosuke, Yosuke, whatever. And then uh, Nanako was also one of my favorite characters. And then for five, uh, Makoto and her sister. So yeah. You, Gina? Uh, three is really tough because, God, I love them all. Um, but if I had to narrow it, I guess it would, yeah, definitely Junpei. He's number one. I mean, he's just so brilliantly <laughs> just through that whole thing. Um, but then uh, after him would probably be Akihiko. Um, oh, yeah. And um, uh, Shinji. Those three, yeah, I think, are Shinji my favorite in that story. And then uh, in four, Obviously, Chie is number one, uh, followed by um, who's the uh, the punk rocker? I forget his name. Uh, Kanji. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So those two, um, and then in five, the jury's out. I'm still kind of uh, marinating with that cast. So those would be mine. For me, my my absolute favorite character overall in the entire series. Is I guess honestly, I I I guess oh, is my favorite yeah. character. Oh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. Nearly all of yeah. if, if I were it's to be honest, I'm a yeah. I'm a huge fan of I guess. It's it's just honestly, 
And again, we go back to the character development. The way that she joins your party, she barely has any personality whatsoever. Like, she's just this quiet, reserved robot that doesn't really say anything other than the fact that she's going to destroy the shadows, you know? But eventually, as she starts to interact with the rest of uh, Seas, uh, which is the name of the, the, the group that, you know, you're part of uh, in 3, uh, she kind of starts to develop her own personality based on the characters that she interacts with, you know? And by the end of the game, she she becomes kind of like her own character and kind of like the linchpin of the story, almost, because right. of, of the way that the game ends. Uh, right. So, I don't know. I guess is my favorite character uh, from all the games. And then from 4, uh, Chie as well. I'm very fond of Chie and on on four and uh the protagonist i think is a really cool dude especially because i i i think out of all the protagonists he's the one that has the most character i don't know if it's because he's been in the most spin-offs and you know all that kind of stuff but i feel that you narukami is is kind of like more of its own character than the protagonist of three and the protagonist of five in fact, mm -hmm. just the fact that he has an official name and the other guys don't, you know? Right, it's, right. It's, it's kind of like goes to show that how he is his own character. And, you know, you can, despite the decisions you take in the game and whatnot, you can still see some of his character coming through underneath. And I, I think he's a very endearing character as well. And finally, for five, uh, I really liked uh, Utaba and I really liked uh, the Shogi player. Is it Shogi oh. or is it Mahjong? No, Shogi. I don't know. Yeah, the shogi, shogi player. player. I, I thought the the shogi player had a great story, and uh, I related a lot with her actually because uh, I used to go through that a lot in school. Uh, the the kind of like self doubt and stuff like that on your abilities. Uh, it's so so. I thought I, it, you know it, it it resonated with me a lot, and Futaba as well because I mean I used to be a, a geekish computer kid, you know, and and. And she has that same issue where she hated going outside and stuff like that, but eventually gets over it. And, you know, now I got over it, too. I'm here talking in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's it for characters, I guess. And, uh, I will yeah, say I that. Number, uh, I'm not going to the ending one. for it. But uh, for three... But I will say that I wept openly uh, at the end of that that story. So it's hard, man. Uh, see I, it through. Uh, it's worth it. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it was difficult to keep the the ice dry. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I can honestly see, and that's why I think I kind of like resonated with Persona Four spinoffs, like the fighting game, so much because it did carry over that story from three. And I was like, all right, what's gonna happen? Yes. And then it's. And then I'm like, right. <laughs> so that's why it, was, it kept me playing. Yeah, it was an opportunity to see your old friends once again, right? Yeah, Even if exactly. it wasn't in the yeah. the most ideal of circumstances, it's a fighting game as opposed to an RPG or whatever, you know, or a or a dungeon crawling game as opposed to the social link stuff. But you can still see the characters, you can still get to see new content with them, and I thought that was great. Right. Yep. That's really What's cool. the next question? Oh, geez, I don't even get to throw my two cents. Jesus, now who's oh, running wow, the podcast? I'm sorry. God. I didn't know. Like, I guess Gino doesn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so He's just tired. Whatever he's not, holding. Is, is, <laughs> whatever <you know>? he's <laughs> holding. <laughs> it's holding me up. <laughs> so one, one of the things I want to point out, because, of course, we're talking about the main characters or characters, ancillary characters that are important to the main story. Um, since I haven't really played, you know, I, I've already told you guys that I have not finished a single Persona game. Uh, I can't really speak towards three because I didn't play enough of it to get to know the characters. Four, I probably have to agree with a couple, you know, you and Gino on Chia. She probably, to me, is the strongest character that I got to know in that game thus far. Uh, but for five, ultimately, my favorite character is actually Shojiro, the, the father figure in five. Oh. And uh, cool. and honestly, it's probably because of the father figure imagery because he comes off as very tough on the main character and gradually he opens up. You know, he's so angry at you because of the way you you bring Futaba in. And I'm, I'm trying to avoid spoilers because I know Gino, has, I don't, he hasn't gone quite far into that yet and, and Ryan hasn't played it yet. But um, just the way he opens up and becomes close to you and respectful, yet he's still 
a stubborn old man who's slowly changing his ways, you know, and it's, and it's obvious how much he loves Futaba. It's just the way he expresses himself and you get to know him is, is, is really important, which brings me to my next point in this game. All these ancillary characters are just as strong as the main characters. You see these, uh, some of these ancillary characters develop. And then even your NPCs that are just named like, um, you know, annoying man sitting on table. The way they write, the way they write their dialogue, like when Adi and I play Persona Five, we voice the characters, right? We don't just, you know, read it all in the same tone. We try to do voices for them based on the way they describe their personality, and and that's because that's part of the reason why I think Persona is so beloved because you feel like you're playing in a world that's developed. You're not just playing this adventure with this main cast of characters. The whole world is has has character. The whole world is one character, and so and that's why that's why we talked about the music because the music is just as important to that, and so are these NPCs. They're just as important to the whole world as everything else. But thank you, Gino. That was my two cents. Please carry on. Well, how, what do we do next? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. We can edit Gino's rudeness out. Let's paint him in a little bit. No, no, we got to leave that in. I, I want I want everyone to know. I want everyone to know how impatient Gino is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gino. All right. So um, this this is a tough one. I, I, I know this is going to be a tough one for you guys. But favorite, your favorite Persona game out of all of them. You got to give me one. I know it's hard, but you got to give me your absolute favorite. Great. It's easy for me. All right. Never mind. That was pretty easy, I think, because earlier we did already say, some of you guys already said, oh, yeah, three is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, Ditto. You know. <laughs> <laughs> toughest question of the night not hard at all actually and, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming FES yes no I mean okay. honestly yeah, I, mean, I, I want to play the PSP when I just don't have a PSP yeah <laughs> you can emulate it on Android now most Androids will run PSP emulators oops that's piracy you can, you can, uh, you can download it on your Vita yeah. uh, Ryan oh you can okay yeah. I'll see if I can find my PSP somewhere. Uh, but yeah, honestly, it actually, it's kind of tough because if you're asking for a specific one, it is between FES and Portable for me because they're different games. They're, they're you know. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, it's kind of tough because the answer uh, fleshes out, I guess, this character a little bit more. And Portable has the female protagonist, which is another one of my favorite characters despite the fact that she's not really a character mm-hmm. or at least not in the canon uh right. i guess you should say that uh yeah. but yeah it's uh i guess i would say fes yeah fes just by virtue of the fact that it it features more of i guess <laughs> your favorite character <laughs> yeah i'm honestly gonna have to go with uh yeah it's a tough one for me man just because yeah. i love three and i love fours much like they're just like it's a good group of friends that like i constantly love going back to like every single time like mm-hmm. and so like i honestly I think i'm gonna go with four for now like it it's i guess because my mood for today or whatever but <laughs> i guess like four but it's i do love three just because the protagonist is such a tragic hero like and i guess is like evolution as a character to like becoming like the main character like in the answer is just so well done on top of that too mm-hmm. so it's like it's really really like hard for me man. yeah i'm gonna go with four just because i like like the wholesome like small town feel that four brought like you know just because yeah. i grew up like in a small town like socorro texas smaller town of like subset of el paso <laughs> right so it's like i recognize that small town feeling I'm like oh, i know what it feels like you know so yeah i'm gonna go with four yeah i like- I, you know, it's 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 right. Yeah, I I agree with with what AJ say. Four is like a like a warm blanket, you know, <laughs> that you yeah. can just drape the drape yourself. In. you've ever experienced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, AJ, you said you had never played Golden, right? I have not played Golden, no, because for the longest time it was on the Vita, and then it was on like what the PlayStation TV service, and then now that it's finally on PC, uh, hopefully I'll be giving it a shot soon. Just gotta get. PC that can run it because cool. right now not so much. I can't imagine it'd be difficult to find a PC that runs it. I mean, can you yeah. not install it on your district, your school laptop? <laughs> I won't. I won't. <laughs> All right. Well then, let's go ahead and move on to our final question of the night. 
Um, well, I say our final, but we might have time for our final, final question. We'll see. But this is a big one. So there are several spinoff titles for the series. Um, and when I say spinoffs, I'm not talking about, of course, the enhanced versions. Um, now, I, I did put down Persona Q1 and 2 as a spinoff, but I was reading up on a, those are uh, supposedly considered canon uh, because they're, they involve uh, 3 and 4. So, but, so according to Atlas, they are canon. So I don't know if they're really considered spinoffs or not, but... They're not really mainline series games, I guess. So no, I guess you would still call them spin-offs, no? Because they're uh, mostly dungeon crawlers as opposed to mainline JRPGs. Okay, I've never played them, so I didn't know if they were more like dungeon crawlers. Okay, so they could be because it's they're like spin-offs. Etrian Odyssey. Have you ever played an Etrian Odyssey game? Well, I'm familiar with the gameplay style. Yes. Yeah, they're they're just like that. They're okay. basically yeah. Etrian Odyssey with a Persona skin. So yeah. of course, the obvious spin-offs are like the Persona Four Arena and then the follow up Ultimax. And then you have the Persona Dancing series. You have a uh, shit on Dancing All Night, which was for three, right? And then uh, Dancing Under the Moon, and then Dancing with Asteroids as they crash into Mars. Whatever the other one was called, okay? <laughs> I don't remember Dancing what they're called. Dancing All Night Er. <laughs> Dancing All Night Er. Um, yeah. And then of course the one that we never got here, and I don't know if we're ever going to, is Persona Five Scramble, which is supposed to be like a Dynasty Wars style of a game. But that one's only in Japan, and I don't know if it's ever going to be released here. But have you guys played any of those spinoffs, and would you recommend any of them? Uh, I'm a fighting game player. I play a lot of uh, anime fighting games like Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear and whatnot. So the Persona 4 Arena games were just kind of like a natural fit for me. Uh, they, they're, they're kind of interesting, though, as, as, as fighting games, because they're kind of horseshit. <laughs> they, really they really are please elaborate it's, uh, it's it's the game is very volatile uh let's just put it that way it's very easy especially in the ultimax version to lose your entire life bar to a single combo okay. that's basically what it is especially when you play it at, at higher levels and some of the characters just are are so different from each other that and the fighting styles are so crazy that there is a lot of knowledge that you need to have when you play that game to know what the other guy can do because yeah. it, since you know you have your regular moves your persona moves you have your combo moves your aerial moves your all-out attacks like it is just an absolute massive amount of mechanics that you need to know and 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 it's difficult, man. Those are some hard games. <laughs> like yeah. to play at an optimal yeah. level, it's it's like it's oof. Like you you gotta be really good at fighting games to be good at the Persona game, honestly. Well, who... A lot of people said that they were simpler and they were easier thus to make. And I guess execution wise they are, but if you're playing against somebody else, there are so many things in that game that can just straight up kill you right away, where it's just like, you know. Yeah. It might be easy to play, but if you die instantly, does that really make it easy? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, like like he matches that show in Asuki. <laughs> he's like a broken character. <laughs> show. <laughs> but, uh, like, to go off what uh, George was saying, like, I really like Persona 4 Arena, but one of the things I liked about it, and like, they, we touched upon this too, is that you get to see characters from, like, 3, and they age. Mm -hmm. And one You're of the right. things I loved doing with that game was playing through the different characters just to see what the story was. And yeah. some of them were like very basic. It was like, oh, I work out. And then when you play <laughs> Labyrinth, like this big epic tale <laughs> of robot genocide. And <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Brian brings up a good point of like how like completely all over the place, right? Like uh, Gino had mentioned the the punk rock kid from Four. And like in his in the fighting game, like he's like, oh, like I accident, my bad. Let me fight. Where it's like, you know, like I guess, and everyone else is like, we have to stop the end of the world, and you know, so, so it's like everyone has their different motivations for being fighting tournament. So it's it's funny, but it's also like, it's very anime, very like ridiculous at some points, and then super serious. But it's yeah. aw it's awesome, like it's fun. It's goofy as shit, but it's really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to say. It subverts the serious tone of the games, but it's 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 good. It's a good uh, addition to the games. I want to say that uh, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, Arena and Ultimax particularly. I even have that. I think I bought that 
that what is that the super limited edition in japan the i don't know with the crystal the crystal statue and all that i i, I forget what the name is anyway so i bought that <laughs> but i think i, I want to highlight something else um I, I, that's my favorite obviously uh but then the uh three adaptation uh the movie the animated movie oh yeah, is yeah, yeah brilliantly yeah, yeah. yeah um i i think if you have any interest uh in persona and then you miss the movie of three you're really missing uh something that's really entertaining and incredible uh so yeah i would definitely say do ultimax and and do the movie <laughs> yeah. or at any point in the movie but then please do also ultimax so, so explain how does how does the th- movie Persona Three the movie fit in with the rest of the story? So it's just it's a retelling of uh, the story in three. Okay. But uh, and and I would I would say that it's it's pretty well like uh, note for note, um, which I thought would be really difficult for them to do because it's such a long story or it feels mm-hmm. so long because you're playing it right. But they mm-hmm. hit all of the major points and it's I mean they take their time. I think it was like. I, I remember when the DVDs were coming out, the Blu-rays were coming out, that I kept wanting it to be the last one because every one was like ninety dollars, you know. <laughs> so yeah, there was like four Blu-rays, and finally yeah, I was like, "Thank four God, movies. it's not a five. <laughs> but I mean, they took their time. Each one of those, uh, you know, Blu-rays is I think two hours. So yeah. it took their time, and it's it's really good. It did it justice. I I do believe that it did it justice, despite the fact that yeah. it's not the same experience as the game, obviously, for right. time constrained reasons and whatnot. I I believe it's 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 a good thing to watch if you wanna either a get your, you know, toes wet in the Persona universe and you just want something more easily digestible than a one hundred and twenty hour game, or if you already played the game and you wanna see it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. or told differently i guess that's very cool i hadn't even thought about the animes i forgot they had had those since uh I, I don't follow it as much as you guys do so i'm glad gino brought that up what about the animes for four and five have you guys seen those oh, four is man. great too <laughs> yeah, four is just, yeah. I, four we're, we're, we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one i think the anime <laughs> for four is fucking garbage i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I I watched it when it originally aired in Japan with with subtitles. I, I they might have fixed it for the Blu-ray, honestly, but when it first aired, it was just so poorly done, man. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like they just rushed it out. There is a scene in particular, actually, where where the when they're eating watermelon. I'm not sure if you guys remember that particular remember. part of the story. Where, where you know they're all eating watermelon and Kanji's putting salt in the watermelon. There's a, a scene where you can see two chias, two separate chias in the anime. One standing with her back to the camera over there, and then you have another one on the front sitting right next to Yukiko eating the watermelon. And I was just like mind blown when I first saw it. Like, how did nobody catch this? <laughs> and then there's just they had one job. another. <laughs> Things like that that just just kind of you know were telltale signs of kind of like a rush production, honestly. Which, to be fair, sure. they probably fixed a lot of those things in the Blu-ray releases, as Japan usually does. They did it for the Blaze Blue anime, and it's watchable now. So it's it's you know I, I might give it another shot, but my experience with the four anime was just awful. <laughs> right. Right. It was it was difficult to watch, man, because the like the animation looked choppy. Uh, there were like art errors, like the Chia one that I told you about. Like background art sometimes was just like atrociously bad. <laughs> like you you their their eyes were just like down to two dots and and just stuff like that, man. I, I mean, I'm probably being an asshole and nitpicky, but but you have high standards. You have high. Standards. I was expecting better from the flagship franchise of atlas you know the what their first i think it was like their first real serious foray into animation right the the persona 4 anime was the first one then the persona 3 movie came afterwards am i right right gino yeah Yeah. okay Mm -hmm. yeah yeah have any of you guys seen five i have not 
yeah, yeah. Some of it is good, uh, and I don't it think it's out yet. Following them, uh, no, it is. It's out. Yeah, it's out. It is okay. No, yeah. no, I haven't seen it. No. Yeah. Oh, I've heard mixed things from people who have come into our our stream and uh and said, oh yeah, I've seen it. and It's all right. Or other people say, oh yeah, I love it. It's great. So I don't know. I haven't watched it myself yet since we haven't finished five. Um, yeah. Ryan, yeah. have you seen any? I've seen parts of three, but I haven't seen that. That's about it. But just, just parts. Like, especially when they had it on like Netflix. It was on Netflix. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. That, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was just the first few parts, though. It was a like, very yeah. short yeah. period of time, and it wasn't even all of them. But yeah. Yeah. So back to the spin off games. We talked about uh, Persona 4 Arena. What about Q? Have any of you guys played any of the Q series? I played the first one. It's fun. Yeah, just yeah, the first one. Well, just the first one. Like they really went to franchise with four because they have the dancing on night and and I I am going to get Q two eventually. But just like what George is saying, it's it's a good dungeon crawler. Yeah, I mean it's 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 cute and funny. The the characters you know are kind of like caricatures of themselves. They're a little bit exaggerated from what they usually are, so it's 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 not like a real serious game. There's a lot of levity and a lot of light heart heartedness on it, which which is cool. I mean, seeing all these characters that you know suffered a lot in Persona Three, talking about toasters and stuff, it's it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's 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 like George said, it's like a cute little just like getaway. Yeah, you got something to do for like thirty. Like you're waiting in the doctor's office or whatever. Like, oh, let me just bust it out real quick, and you know, it's yeah. The story is there. It's like they, I really didn't pay attention too much to the story. I was just like, yeah, cool, interact with characters that I know and love. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, would you say it's worth playing if you've played the mainline series, or would it be approachable for anyone who's new to the series? I would just say anybody. Okay. Yeah, I mean it. It'd be like an introduction to the characters, and they don't really spoil the games that they come from. So okay, so they don't have to know any previous information to have, to enjoy yeah. the games. No, not really. No. Okay. That's it just makes know. it more enjoyable, you know. Right, because then yeah. you can catch things those little things or Easter yeah. eggs or things like that. Yeah, you get the fan service call outs more, but if, if you don't know anything, you're not gonna you're not gonna miss much. Okay. Now I take it none of you guys have had a chance to play Persona Five Scramble since it's not here in the states, right? No. <laughs> so then let me ask you this. If knowing now that it's that's like a Dynasty Warriors game, if that were to come out in the States, would you be interested in playing it and and uh would you buy it immediately or would you wait and see how it reviews before you pick it up? If at all. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That you answer know, doesn't I, surprise me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know actually because I'm not a huge fan of of Dynasty Warrior games, to be honest, uh, personally, just because like the Zelda one, Hyrule Warriors, and uh, the Fire Emblem one, Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, I like both of those series, but those games just really didn't have any pull with me. I played Hyrule Warriors a little bit, and I was like, yeah, that's cool, but nah. And then... <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors, I was just like, I would much rather be playing regular Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like, hmm. I mean, I'll buy it because I'm a Persona fan and I have all the games, but whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think the yeah, attraction I think the attraction of Dynasty Warriors back when we released on PS2 is, is you know, you could actually have, you know, up to 50 NPC characters you're fighting at a time. Like that was at the time, that was incredible. But nowadays, it's not a big deal. So they have to do something different. Like like you said, I think Hyrule Warriors was fine. I, did, I didn't even finish it. You know how big a Zelda fan I am. And then they made the announcement for the new Hyrule Warriors game coming out later this year, November. And I mean, I was like, oh, cool, great. But, you know, where's uh, Breath of the Wild 2? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You know>? right. <laughs> but I know that may not be coming out until, you know, if we're lucky, it'll come out next year, and that's gonna have to tide me over while I wait for Metroid Prime Four, which may not come out ever. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> I mean, you may be keep dreaming. I mean, 35th anniversary well, is in 2022, Metroid so Prime. hopefully it comes out then. Maybe they make hey. the Metroid Prime Dancing on Art game first. Oh, no, there you go. 
you know, uh, it'll be it'll be Federation dance off. That's what it will be. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Nintendo, run with it. But uh, I, I'd like a little bit of money for for the thirty dollars you make off of it. Please give me five. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> All right. All right, so this will be our absolute final question of the night. So, Persona itself is a spinoff of the Shin Megami Tensei series. Um, I, I was a little confused about this. I, I guess I want to make sure. I, I don't know if you guys understand how it goes, but when I was reading the research on it, the original series was Megami Tensei. And then it seems like when it went international, they started calling it Shin Megami Tensei. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Persona is supposed to be a spinoff. Basically, it's it's Shin Megami Tensei, but in high school is the idea that they were running with, which is why the game has always been in high school. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Persona is its own spinoff of that series. Uh, but have you guys played any other games in the series, and would you recommend them to Persona fans? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think if you're a Persona fan, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't play at least one of the games series, honestly. Because it, it, it has a lot of the same uh, kind of charm that Persona has. Just a little bit different. Obviously, there's no high school settings in, in any of the uh, Shin Megami Tensei games. But there's a lot of games, especially in the PS2, I think, that are worth visiting and that are worth the, the journey towards. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne on the PS2 is, is, is a great game great game is just that it's very very hard uh a lot of uh people kind of got turned off the series because of it uh there's a lot of filters in the game that make it so difficult when you get to a certain point and if you're not a certain level you basically screw yourself over and kind of have to start over you know because there's not enough grinding areas in the game where you can actually level yourself up so you gotta be a little bit conscientious of the way you play those games um then uh you got uh the digital devil saga was also a real popular one way back then and and it's one of my favorite ones too i played the one and two and i believe those are uh some of the best jrpgs that i have played on the ps2 honestly yeah yeah i only played the first digital devil saga but it was so good yeah yeah i agree it, it it's 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 very common in the Megami Tensei series for it to be post-apocalyptic, you know. So a lot of those things that you see are are post. You see it a lot in four, the the one in the 3DS too, where you you after you get out of that pastoral setting that you're in, you eventually go to post-apocalyptic Tokyo and whatnot, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and 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 it's kind of like a running theme where you're you're fighting after the end of the world, uh, on on four. And on Digital Devil Saga, and on a couple other games, uh, not all of them, but it is it is a common running theme, and I think it's something that they do pretty well. Now, Shin Megami Tensei three had a huge gap between three, two, and three, because one and two were released on the Super Famicom, and they were never released here. But do you know if they they they've never done like a re-release in one of one and two here, have they? That you're aware of. No, not that I know of. I know that it was eventually released for the se- for one of the Sega consoles. I do not know specifically which one, but uh, but yeah, eventually they saw a re-release in the Sega consoles after they came out in the Super Famicom, but it was only in Japan. Okay, <laughs> so we've never had a chance to play those unless we try to find. And I, I, I never looked it up, so I don't know if there's even any fan translations of those two. Yeah, there's several. Okay, there's several. Yeah. So what about four? Because four came out on 3DS. Did you guys play four? I played a little bit through it, but honestly, it's uh, the tone kind of turned me off a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain it, but just uh, I don't know. It was it was kind of like the tone of three, Persona three, but like up to eleven. You know, it was just so oppressive and so dreary because the way that you do it is is after you you're a samurai, right? And you're training to become a demon hunter and whatnot, but you're actually on a kingdom that exists above the skyline of Tokyo, right? And eventually you descend into post-apocalyptic Tokyo, and it's all dark, and you know it's all destroyed, and everybody's like eking out a meager existence. You know, it's 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 really cool for people who are into that, but it just kind of bumped me out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. 
coming from the guy who loves near automata that this bummed was, you out yeah a little bit more than near honestly gino's back hey gino oh we see you you left the pantry that is the most full of shit response i've heard from you oh my in god our, in our, across our friendship here i mean kettle black george kettle black it's no honestly it, it it's just kind of different man i'm not sure if you guys have played the the what is it called the other ds games devil survivor no it kind of has a similar no. it's called devil survivor because you're one of the few people who survived the apocalypse so again you're just kind of like oh man this kind of sucked <laughs> you know i immerse myself into my games a lot so so when it's stuff like that that kind of happens near for example has some tones of hope to it. And the, oh. the environments in Nier are very lush, very green, some of them. Right. So you can kind of immerse yourself into it and it doesn't weigh into your psyche as much. But with 4, it was just like so oppressive, dude. It was so dark, so brown, so... So supposedly number 5 is going to come out next year on the Switch, even though it's it was announced back in 2016 for the Switch. And we haven't really heard anything of it. Um you guys looking forward to it or at this point you're just like well um, i'm good i know i mean i always have hope because i've uh i played four and i agree with george a lot about that it's not as good as some of his their other stuff like in terms of like the other games like uh i do like devil survivor uh but yeah you have that feeling of like if you don't do this the world's going to end <laughs> but I do love the fact like with all of these games, all the demons get to see different aspects of the same demons. So you yeah. see Pixies and some of the games, like in my favorite one is probably Strange Journey. And you oh, get to talk yeah. with them and you get to negotiate and they can join you. You can move on to these different levels and different worlds and that's like this great soundtrack. Yeah. Good as well. And uh and I like and with the Devil Survivor. And Devil Survivor, like, overclocked. Uh, oh, no. You know, it takes a lot of the... The gameplay's different, but I mm -hmm. like the characters, and I think it's still, like, intriguing. Because you're yeah. stuck, and you can't get anywhere. And you're trying to escape, and these people die, and you're like... Sometimes you fail, and sometimes you win. <laughs> but uh, but those, like, of the spinoff games... I haven't played Devil Summoner, so I have it. But I really like the Devil Survivor, and... And Strange Journey, yeah, is is really great. Strange Journey was for the original DS, right, or was it Game Boy Advance still? Uh, I have the DS one. Oh, okay, so it's probably DS, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I the little soundtrack and stuff like that too. I know they came out recently with like a an enhanced version, right? Strange Journey Redux, or is that not out yet? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I'll have to look it up because I've always wanted to play that and I I I don't know what happened to my DS. I think I <laughs> left it on a bus or something. Now the <laughs> the Shin Megami Tensei, the mainline series, I guess. Um are they each standalone stories or are they one big universe? I mean No, they're all <laughs> it's really complicated, right, Ryan? Yeah, because I don't think like like Devils as a uh, survivor. I don't see how that can exist in the same universe as Persona. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, Japan goes into, like, lockdown. And mm -hmm. we'll see demons. So I think the connecting thread all like, the demons itself. Yeah. Because you have the same demons, the designs. You can see like, how they change over time. But I wouldn't say that, yeah, like... Like the Shin Megami games, I don't see how that can be in the same universe as like Persona 3. Well, I think what I meant is like, you know, so like Persona, those games, the, the shared portion is the Velvet Room, right? With Persona. Uh -huh. But like uh, Shin Megami, is it the same thing where it's Shin Megami 3 and 4, but they're independent of each other? Or is it a continuation of the story? Yeah, no, they're, they're all totally independent. I okay. Believe. So you uh, can play 4 without having to worry about playing 3. Yeah, exactly. The, the the this these the oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this game series i believe exists in what fans have called it the amala multiverse right 
And uh, I believe that there's like four different like main threads for it. I'm sure if uh, editors note, if if you look for it, Mike, you can you can find a a, a timeline for it under Amala Multiverse. It's A M A L A Multiverse, and uh, I believe that it it groups like the Megami Tenseis and their spin-offs into kind of like a, <laughs> a really confusing timeline, you know. So. But yeah, it, it basically includes all the all the Megami Tensei games on it. As confusing as it may be, I bet it still more makes more sense in the Zelda timeline. Yeah, uh, mm. I don't know, man. I'm looking at it right now, and it. it... <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Well, any final words before uh, we close out for tonight? Final thoughts. It's a great game series. If you haven't played it, play it. Start with Persona 3. For sure. <laughs> You'll get second that. <laughs> but, I mean, that's about it. It's a series that's really close to, from what I've heard, I'm going to assume that it's close to your hearts as much as it is to mine. And uh, Yeah, you're really totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gino, I've always had a hard time reading you. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's 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 really worth playing. It's worth the time investment. And if you do, I don't think you're gonna regret it one bit. It's they're long games, but you know they're an experience. They're a journey, and uh, it's a journey that if you love video games, I don't think you should deprive yourself of. Is Persona Three available on uh, PS4 on their digital store? You know, it's available on the PS3 as far as I know, but I don't know if, if you can play it on the PS4 because it's part of the PS2 classics. Right, so that's what I was wondering. Additionally, you can also play it on the PS Vita or the PSP or the PS TV. But those are all <laughs> things that are pretty difficult to get a hold of now. Because yeah. probably the one that's most, that you may have the most, uh, the easiest ability to get to, like obviously Persona 5 because it's the newest one. But I would say if you can't get to Persona 3, start with Persona 4. Because uh, especially yeah. if, if you're going to play, play Golden. Um, and, you know, get it on Steam or if you have a Vita or PSTV, you know, play it on there. If you can somehow get your hands on, on I mean, if, if I guess you could play the PS2 version, which isn't Golden. It's just standard PS4. But really, you'd be doing yourself a disservice. Just just jump straight to Golden. You're not going to miss yeah. anything by, jump, by skipping the, the original version. Golden really just is an improved version with additional story and gameplay and... It really is just in that case it really is an enhanced version yeah um, exactly so yeah. go with that if you can't you know persona 5 is obviously a good place to start you, you heard him say if you're looking at Toshimigami tensei where it's more um you know if you don't like the high school theme exactly. you can go with Shimigami tensei four is still on 3ds that one's still pretty easy to get a hold of um mm -hmm. three on ps2 might be more difficult but if you're willing to emulate you can always emulate it uh, but I guess that goes the same for Persona 3. Yeah, um, and remember, most Android phones now can emulate uh, PSP. So if you're having a hard time finding original hardware to play Persona 3, I would really recommend giving Persona 3 Portable on your Android phone a shot. Yeah, we don't encourage piracy, <laughs> but we do encourage emulation. So own it, so then that way you can justify playing it on an emulator. <laughs> 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 I uh, just wanted to say that uh, my favorite uh, uh, Ultimax uh, character is Adachi, and then <laughs> Junpei. So that would be my end. My uh, this is my avatar saying goodbye. Wait, wait, which, which one has the steel chair with him? That's Kanji. Uh, oh, that's Kanji. Kanji. Okay. Yeah, that's Kanji. Okay, never mind. I thought I thought he was your favorite Persona Arena character. Adachi's cool, man, because he's like, fuck bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys tuning or coming in tonight and uh, sharing with Persona. This was a uh, this is a pretty big deal for me because, again, my my like I really enjoy the things you guys have shared about Persona in the past, and it's one of those series that I've just kind of let fall to the wayside. I've given it a chance, but like you said, it does require an investment of your time. Uh, and it and, and once you get your time in there, like I will be honest with you, Persona Three will probably be the one that takes the longest for you to buy into because it literally takes the first twenty hours of the game before you really get into the meat of anything. 
So that one, that one's tough. Persona four and Persona five are a lot easier to get into because you kind of jump into it within the first, you know, five six hours of the game. But Persona three, from what I've read, from what I've seen, from what you guys have talked about, because I, I have watched the playthrough, I know the story. It, it really is looks like it's well worth it. I need to go back and play it. I need to give it the service it deserves. But thank you guys for coming in tonight. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, um, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a follow up. Uh, later on when Persona 5 or Persona 6 comes out in 17 years and we'll do Persona <laughs> Episode 2 <laughs> on the PlayStation 8. Thank you for having us, Bobby. Really Thank appreciate you, Bobby. it. It was awesome and, being uh, here. Bobby. I, I, I think this was a great episode. Thank you, guys. AJ, <laughs> Gino, Ryan. Thank you, George. Yeah. You guys yeah, did thank awesome. You guys. Yeah, all of you. you know. So much fun. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Let's move to the Peleoneros. Let's see what Mike is up to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Signing off, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Laters. Bye. Persona is a spectacular series to behold, with vibrant imagery, a variety of musical scores that imbue you with the entire spectrum of human emotions, thought-provoking stories with flights of the imagination so far beyond the scope of reason and common sense that everything is questioned, and a wealth of characters that will no doubt take up residence in your heart for the rest of your life. Quite honestly, the worst thing about Persona is that they have to end. Maybe that's why I haven't finished one yet because I don't want them to end? Well, that's it for this podcast. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back soon with an episode on the fantasy adventure series starring everyone's favorite silent protagonist, The Legend of Zelda. Peace! This episode of Obsessive Compulsive Gamer Podcast was produced by Bobby, edited by Mike B, and hosted by Bobby. If you would like to know more about the music used in this episode, please check the links in the description. Thanks for watching and listening. Check out our website at ocgamer.org for more episodes and articles on gaming.